situation affect your modeling? Um, if you look at the program, uh, the, um, the every specific program that is sort of preset in Honeybee is associated with a set of infiltration and ventilation. And you can see the infiltration for this mid-rise apartment office is set to 0 0.0005 um, cubic meters per second per square meter. And the ventilation is set to be 0 0.0004 cubic meters per second per square meter. And so if you, um, th th this is for fresh air and this is the uncontrolled air that is uh, coming in and out of the uh, envelope. If we switch to a different program, so instead of a mid-rise apartment, say a large office building classroom, then you'll notice that this changes. The infiltration is now tighter, 0 0.002, and the ventilation is, there's more ventilation, uh, and the terms change. So it's 0 0.0047 per person, and 0 0.0006 per square meter. Um, and this is a fairly common way of, um, of setting ventilation based on both the number of people, the occupancy, as well as the um, area of the building. Now, um, to set custom infiltration and ventilation, we can um, use this custom program type and input these, um, these inputs for infiltration and ventilation. So for example, I'm gonna move these set point schedules down and we're gonna use this space right here. Uh, I can go to my loads category here and um, HB infiltration and set a name, a flow per area, and it just um, for now, I'm gonna just set this to be zero, so there's no infiltration. And then a schedule. By default, that schedule is always on, um, and you could also set a schedule for the entire year. If, say, um, your, the, the attributes of your building changed over time. Uh, we're going to assume that the infiltration is the same all the time at zero. So this would be a theoretically completely airtight building. And I'm going to put that into this infiltration here. And we can see now this is going into here. And so the infiltration is set to zero now and always on. And then for uh, ventilation, similar idea. We can go to this and it gives us a few different options. So I can put in a name for the object and then I can have a flow per person, a flow per area, a flow per zone, or a uh, ACH air change per hour. So this is um, the number of air changes in the zone, whereas all three of these are in cubic meters per square uh, but sorry, cubic meters per second. Regardless, I'm going to set this to also be zero. And so we can see what happens if there is no airflow through the zone at all. Um, and also this is gonna be constantly on or really off as the case may be. Uh, and now I'm gonna plug this into ventilation. And so with both of these set to zero, we should see um, both that the zone overheats um, and that it um, has less um, heating needs. So more cooling needs, less heating needs. Um, so let's run this and see what happens. So it's done running and you can look at the results here. And we can see that there, there is in fact a lot more um, cooling going on and a lot less heating um, if we look at the UI that's associated with that, um, you can see that we've um, dramatically increased, I think by 10 times, the amount of cooling. Um, and the, the heating has, oh, what's going on? No, here's what's happened. 
there is no heating that's being reported here. Um, notice that it's dropped off this list completely. It's interesting, although it does show some times here, but it's basically zero for all of these. Um, and our cooling has gone up to 19.75. Um, and that must be what this number is with this two and a half COP. So I have to be careful and pay attention to this because this really should be that number there, 4.39, which is about 10 times more than we had before. Um, and uh, yeah, and you can see just how hot everything gets overheated as a result of all of that. Um, The, the lack of ventilation. And this is an interesting feature here. Uh, I'm looking at the ventilation air change rate and noticing that we're actually getting quite a lot of air changes, which is unexpected because our ventilation is set to zero. Um, you can see it's going all the way up to 4.3 air changes per hour. And upon further inspection, what's actually happening here is our um, Ventilation rate for fresh air is set to zero, but if you remember earlier, we set the economizer to be in differential dry bulb mode, which means that it is drawing in fresh air uh, to cool down the zone whenever it can. And so that's what you're seeing here is that we're getting fresh air, uh, cooler outdoor air coming in to cool down the zone. If we change this from um, differential dry bulb to economize to no economizer and turn off the economizer we should see that airflow rate go to zero and it's running right now Let's see what happens here this should turn blue and this graph should go to zero here ah there it is so the turning off the economizer there um, means that we've got no airflow through the zone at all, and it further increases the um, temperature inside the zone and increases the cooling energy as well. So now our cooling should have gone up yet again. This, whoops. Yeah, and we're all the way up to, to 30 kilowatt hours per square meter. So this sort of underlines the importance of ventilation, appropriate ventilation, and it also underlines the um, potential of a very tightly sealed building to um, minimize heating uh, needs. Now, this is what I've modeled here is theoretical and practically impossible to have a building that is completely sealed like this, but it does help to understand where the push points are for the model. In the next video, I'll be looking at how to learn from this and um, implement a more sort of um, realistic scenario that uh, draws from this, uh, what, we, what we're learning in, uh, here with the ventilation systems.